starts right now. Good morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. It is Monday, December 4th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it was a nice weekend, especially with the weather, especially yesterday. It was outstanding. Do we keep that trend going through the work week, Mike? Yep, through almost all of the work week. It's a chilly morning out there. Grab a jacket and then yesterday it was cold in the morning and had to go to the store in the afternoon grocery store. More shorts and that's the way it's going to be today and the next uh, few days. 54 degrees We've actually gone up a couple of notches in the past hour, which seems kind of counterintuitive at night, but we do have a little bit of a breeze out there. Dew point is down to 40. So we do have clear skies, dry air, but again, <clears throat> excuse me, that little bit of a breeze helps to keep the atmosphere kind of stirred up. 70 for a high temperature later on today. So like over the weekend, nice big warm up. 20 and 25, in some cases close to 30 degrees. The aquifer did go up one tenth of a foot in yesterday's reading and allergens, mold is low, still got some mountain cedar hanging around here, even though it is on the low side. So take a look at some of the temperatures around the area. Down to 43 right now in Kerrville. We have had a uh, front work its way on through here, and I think some of that cooler air will continue to move on in. Like I said, we've got some very dry air in place, but that little bit of a breeze in places keeps the air stirred up where there is no wind that's going to allow the heavier, cooler air to kind of settle down here to the surface. And we do have, well, in some spots, there have been a little bit of a, a wind chill to deal with this morning. Of course, wind chill formulas don't come into play when you're above 50 degrees. Anyway, cloudy sky, or excuse me, uh, just a couple of clouds out there, I should say. Chilly this morning, just one or two high clouds. Sunny today, another big warm up getting up uh, just above normal right in the low 70s. Rest of the week, same thing. Chilly, cool mornings, warm afternoons. Then the humidity tries to come back in here. We do try to warm up by late Thursday, Friday. Then another front's going to move through here Saturday with another reinforcing shot of cool air. Big question is any rain in the forecast? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, good morning, sir. How was your weekend? Uh, pretty quick and quiet, Mike, and that's the way I like it. But uh, outside traffic's looking the same at 37 near the Alamo Dome. We have a beautiful shot of the tower, and you can really see traffic is looking pretty nice out there as well. The north and southbound lanes of I-37 don't seem to be riddled with too much traffic, but we'll keep a close eye on many of the areas as to get this Monday commute rolling. Let's get a look at our map. No major issues to report here, at least just yet, but uh, that usually changes around 6 a.m. We'll keep a close eye on the roadways, but a quick look at your travel times. If you're making that journey from Bernie, watch out because we do have a little bit of the overnight construction along I-10 if you're heading eastbound. So your commute should still be about 25 minutes to get right here to the downtown area of San Antonio, but again, crews are out there, likely part of the North Expansion Project. We'll talk about that later on, but 20 minutes right now, 281 Southbound if you are heading in from Bolverde, and a 28-minute commute if you're heading in from New Braunfels along I-35 Southbound. Back here on Transguide, we'll keep a close eye on the roadways, and again, if you drove down I-10 at any point this weekend, you may have been caught in some of that construction. We'll have an update on the 1604 North Expansion Project and what you can expect a little bit later on. Mark? Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man in a wheelchair was hit by a train overnight. It happened around 1 a.m. near the intersection of West Commerce and Salado Street, just west of downtown. Police say the man was trying to cross the tracks when the train hit him. He was taken to a hospital. His official condition has not been released. And to push for product accessibility, more than a dozen San Antonio businesses are helping with. Our Avery Everett shows us how what started with one donation drop off location on the west side is quickly spreading across the city. It's uh, the uh, strawberry orchetta. There's a reason behind this recipe. And it's pink colors. Filling each cup to the brim, bringing in support for period product accessibility. I feel I just relate with everything they do. This downtown coffee shop is now collecting donations and fundraising for a greater cause. We are the heart of the city and we need to uh, collaborate together to make the difference. It's another effort from the local group Period Palooza to fight against period poverty in San Antonio. Data in the U.S. shows around 16.9 million people who menstruate live in poverty. Two-thirds of them say they have struggled to afford these products in the past. We would love it to get as many products as possible. What started with just one locker on the west side has now swept into 20 other businesses all across town, taking in period product donations. We felt like we needed it. We didn't realize that other people also needed as much. These collections going back into the city through free pickup spots and nonprofit needs, finding ways to meet people where they are and to fill a demand the San Antonio Diaper Bank says is at an all-time high. We've seen an uptick on the number of 
items being requested. The diaper bank calling on the community to help bring in donations, especially with the holidays right around the corner. And for those families that are struggling and, and you hear it every day, you know, how it makes a difference. Pushing for more points of access is one of the reasons you'll see these boxes popping up across the city. Not everybody drinks coffee. Not everybody goes to bars. As Period Palooza says their work is far from over. This is just the beginning. Even if you finish your cup of coffee. This period pantry is still accepting donations and it's also available for pickups. We have the list of the other 20 businesses right now on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. To the Middle East now where this weekend saw continued escalations from Iran-backed Houthi rebels who attack commercial ships. It's prompting the U.S. to intervene with a naval destroyer. And as ABC's Liz Landers reports, U.S. Central Command says that the attacks represent a direct threat to international commerce and maritime security. Tensions remain high this morning in the Middle East as three commercial ships were attacked in the Red Sea. The Pentagon saying missiles coming from Yemen hit the ships during the seven hour long attack. The USS Kearney, a Navy destroyer in the area, intercepted and shot down three drones while on patrol assisting the ships, according to the Pentagon, who blamed Iran for the attacks. It may have been that the missiles flew over the U.S. ships on their way to the intended target, which is one of the civilian ships. So there's a little bit of semantics here, but the important point here is that the Houthis are playing with fire by launching missiles over U.S. ships. The Pentagon adding in a statement that the United States will consider all appropriate responses in full coordination with its international allies and partners. And it's not the first time. Since the start of the war between Israel and Hamas, there have been a number of attacks from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen on ships in the Red Sea. The U.S. is being very careful not to turn the Red Sea into a shooting gallery. This latest attack comes as the fighting between Israel and Hamas escalates, with Israel saying they've expanded ground operations to every part of Gaza, pushing to the south as well. Israeli defense forces have conducted 10,000 airstrikes on the small territory since the start of the war. One this weekend reportedly killed a Hamas commander who helped carry out the October 7th attack on Israel. Bury me with him, says this little boy after his brother was killed, one of thousands of children killed in the conflict. About 80 percent of the population in Gaza is homeless, according to the United Nations. The humanitarian organization says that their shelters are overwhelmed and there's a lack of drinkable water, food and facilities. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. Alaska Airlines has agreed to buy Hawaiian Airlines in a $1.9 billion deal, potentially putting it on track for a clash with a Biden administration wary of higher airfares. The combined company would maintain both airlines' brands. Officials from both companies called the deal a chance to combine two carriers with few overlapping routes, which they said would create a stronger company to compete with American, Delta, Southwest, and United. The combined airline would also participate in the One World Alliance, which includes American, British Airways, and Cathay Pacific. The Texas Longhorns. And that was just a Steph's house. <laughs> Pandemonium in Austin as the Texas Longhorns found out they made it into the college football playoff after beating Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. Longhorns gave themselves a chance to compete for a national championship, and now they have one. Longhorns will play their first ever college football playoff, and it might take a little bit for it all to set in. It's unreal. I mean, I... I get goosebumps every time uh, I even think about it. Uh, again, just just truly honored to, to be a part of a team that you know works as hard, and um, I know that we're gonna we're gonna come to play. Um, you know, we played Washington and in, in the Alamo Bowl last year, so it's it's kind of funny how that all works out. So couldn't be more excited for for this amazing opportunity. I understand there's high expectations and and uh, and, and high standard here for winning championships, but that's why I came here. You're brought here to compete for championships year in and year out. Out. And so now to be here in year three, this is why I came. As for the matchups in college football playoff, Alabama will take on Michigan in the Rolls Bowl at 4 p.m. New Year's Day. And the nightcap, Texas faces undefeated Washington in the All-State Sugar Bowl in the Superdome in New Orleans. The national championship is Monday, January 8th 
at NRG Stadium over in Houston. Congratulations to your Longhorn staff. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, I, I wish that was my house, right, to have all the players there. Welcome. <laughs> no, but yeah, very excited about this. Uh, nice way to, I guess, wrap up the Big 12. No kidding. And they played a heck of a game against Oklahoma State, yeah, too, this yeah. past weekend. Yeah. All right, 512, 55 degrees. And up next, why Google is reportedly pushing the launch of its next generation AI model to next year. Up next, how some popular weight loss drugs are also helping curb alcohol addiction. And let's look out there with a live cam. Yeah, starting off chilly, definitely want to grab a jacket or a sweater, but uh, it's going to warm up again to be another nice day. We'll have those full details with Mike coming up. And welcome back. It's 513. So new research shows that Ozempic and other weight loss drugs may help curb alcohol addiction. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new research on weight loss medication and alcohol use. I have no desire to drink wine anymore. And it's it, that's crazy to me because I couldn't stop before. A new case study composed of six people screening positive for alcohol use disorder, or AUD, found that they all saw a clinically significant decrease in symptoms while they were using semaglutide for weight loss. Christy Martin, who was not part of the study, says while she used to drink wine every night, her urge to drink has disappeared. Drinking for me was becoming a bit of an issue, and the fact that I just have no desire for it is something I didn't expect and is just an amazing side benefit. And coming up at 7 a.m., Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live on what this new research means and who it could benefit. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. 514, 54 degrees. Up next, why PlayStation Store users are losing access to Discovery TV shows they have purchased with no refunds. At Check Your Trans Guide, Stephen will be back in the studio to get us updated on your early, early Monday morning commute. You know that feeling of having to rewash dishes that didn't get cleaned? I don't. Cascade Platinum Plus has me doing dishes differently. Scrub, soak, nope. I just scrape, load, and I'm done. Only Platinum Plus is bigger with double the dawn grease fighting power and double the scrubbing power for a no rewash clean and a cabinet ready shine. Rewash? Not in my house. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. I got that eternal energy. Uh, you don't know what's standing in front of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you guys telling secrets? Mine is that Honey Nut Cheerios can help lower cholesterol. That's not a secret. It's on the box. Wow. Ooh, I have a secret. I invented the microchip. <laughs> is she serious? Welcome back, 518. Google, Google is reportedly delaying the launch of its next generation AI model called Gemini until next year. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the latest in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Google is delaying the launch of its next generation AI model. Gemini AI was expected to debut next week, with events already planned in New York and California. But reports say the rollout was pushed back until next year because Gemini is struggling with non-English prompts. PlayStation users are losing access to some TV shows. Sony says people who purchase digital shows made by Discovery will lose the content due to expiring license agreements. Hundreds of Discovery programs are being removed, including 19 Kids and Counting and Say Yes to the Dress. And the rock band Kiss has reached the end of the road, but only in human form. The Hall of Famers will continue as digital avatars. The company behind the tech says it will allow Kiss to continue its legacy for eternity. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Good morning again. <laughs> Good morning yeah. to Good everybody. Morning. Stephen, how was your Welcome. weekend? Oh, like I said, it was uh, quiet. Did absolutely nothing. I know, uh, you know, fail in comparison to Steph and Mike. Yeah. Uh, guys had a busy weekend. Yeah. Try to, you uh, had uh, to. rock and roll the marathon. Rock and, roll. Yes. Yes. And, and you did the half in how long? Uh, two hours, ten minutes. Fantastic. Wow. Thank Wonderful. You. Fantastic stuff. Thank you. And Mike took another bow on the stage <laughs> yeah. in the yeah. Nutcracker. Valley San Antonio, and they had the four performances this weekend, and then four more coming up this next weekend. Uh, go see it. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a lot of fun, and there's a special one on 
Wednesday. Okay. It is, oh, I can't think of what they've called it, but it's kind of a, a way to meet and greet all the um, all the, the dancers and oh, do some little neat. activities and everything yeah. there That's at the Dolphin Zone. Cool. Cool. Well, I know we were talking about the driving through I-10 to get to Bernie because they had their Christmas parade as yep. well, and I-10 was a little bit of a mess over the weekend because we had construction, part of the North Expansion Project. We're talking about Loop 1604 right there at that interchange, and if you were traveling through there at any point, you may have seen those barricades, and even on my way into work this morning, I saw crews were still out there, but just as a quick reminder, this is a billion dollar investment into the corridor because Texas estimates 150,000 drivers commute along 1604 each and every day. So they're hoping to expand the number of lanes from four to 10, but as you know, it's going to take some time. Now this project stretches about 23 miles from 1604 from Bandera Road to I-35, and it's broken up into five segments. Right now, we know three of those segments are under construction, and you can scan this QR code right now. We have a full article that breaks down exactly what you need to know if you have to travel along Loop 1604 or I-10. And remember, it's uh, going to take a few years for this project to complete. But again, it's always good to know what to expect, especially if you're traveling at any point where we see that some of that construction. And Mike, uh, the area that you traveled by, you mentioned that there was a big stretch of traffic there. Wearing well, it, it was funny because going out I-10, and I haven't gone through there recently, and they've got that one section of the overpass mm -hmm. And it's just sitting there like a couple of hundred yards of girder, those giant girders up there. And it's like, what is that up there? Because <laughs> it's kind of hanging in the air by itself almost. But um, yeah, it's tough, but grin and bear it, I guess. All right, a lot of folks were talking about the sunset yesterday. We had a few clouds that tried to roll on in here, and it was absolutely spectacular. Thank you very much for that KSAC Connect picture. Should have a good looking sunrise this morning. We've got mostly clear skies right now, maybe a couple of uh, leftover high clouds here or there. This is the uh, satellite radar loop, and as this loops back on through, there were those few leftover clouds that uh, popped up yesterday and now those have pushed on out of here as a front works its way and is working its way on through here. Now, as far as the temperatures, and like I mentioned off the top of the show, they have gone up slightly because the wind is kind of keeping things stirred up. We were right around 50 a couple of hours ago and now up to... Uh, up into the 54 degree range. Now, as far as the humidity, though, that's going to continue to dry out throughout the day. So that's going to then allow for those big, big swings in temperatures again. So we're going to be gaining 20, 25, in some cases close to 30 degrees, like was the case over the weekend from the low to the high. So it's jackets and then t-shirts and almost shorts in the afternoon. And the dry air is going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. So that means we'll have same situation, chilly mornings, warm afternoons. I think we're going to be dropping down to the mid 40s before it's all said and done this morning and then warm up nice and quickly. One or two little high clouds out there, maybe, and plenty of sunshine, though. We're already going to be up to 65 degrees, just about to the normal high at noon. And then we do top off at 70 later on this afternoon. So a beautiful, beautiful day out there. Now, as far as jumping into Saturday, between now and then, Nothing's going to be going on here. We'll have a few more clouds Thursday, Friday, but Saturday there's a, the next front which is moving on through and it does have a small chance. This long range computer model does have a small chance for a couple of showers around here. Notice how the majority would be off to the northeast. And again, this is broad brush that's painted on in 10% chance maybe at best. Good news, bad news. Good news if you have any outdoor activities. Bad news uh, because we could definitely use, obviously, some more rain. But that's going to be getting on out of here by noon, early afternoon. And then it's going to be absolutely gorgeous in the afternoon. And it will be then cooler. So what warm air tries to work its way back in here and humidity, which you can tell about the low temperatures Friday and Saturday, that then goes away with that front that moves on through. 40s up to 70s. Throughout uh, the first chunk of the week with plenty of sunshine, a few more clouds Thursday, Friday, and like I said, that front moving through on Saturday. whole lot more after this. Stick Today in entertainment news, your first big look at a new movie and two Academy Award winners make history. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. This is, it's important to note, the first broadcast show ever to focus exclusively on the achievements of the disabled.
This year's Media Access Awards made history. Not only was it the first time the show, which honors representation of disability in TV and film, was broadcast on television, but Oscar winners Marley Matlin and Troy Kotsur were the first pair of deaf actors ever to host an award show. The Media Access Awards aired Sunday, the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, and will repeat on PBS stations and the PBS app. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 54 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA in our Gardening with KSAT segment, we're going to check out which produce you can plant now before we get our first freeze. And we're looking back at the sight and sounds you may have missed from this weekend's Rock and Roll Marathon. And a college football player who was injured in a drive-by shooting is alive today because of his phone. We'll explain coming up at 6. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is December 4th. Yeah, happy Monday. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, the weather certainly helped out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. We went to the uh, the Christmas parade in Bernie and it was so warm driving up there in the afternoon. And then it's like, oh, we just took a jacket, but it did cool down quickly. Oh, I so, bet it did. Yeah, and that's going to be the situation for the next couple of evenings. Kind of chilly starting off this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now and temperature stands at 54 degrees. Now we've actually gone up a couple of degrees basically due to the fact that we've got this breeze out there. We've got really dry air. We've got clear skies, but the wind tends to keep the air stirred up a lot more instead of letting the heavier, cooler air settle down to the uh, the surface. 43 right now in Kerrville, 48 in Comfort, though I do think we will drop down uh, a few more notches before it's all said and done. And there's that wind coming in here primarily out of the northeast at 5, 10 miles per hour. A front has moved on through here, and so that's why the, the wind shifted around, got rid of any of those leftover clouds from yesterday as well. Mold and mountain cedar both on the low side. Updated counts going to be coming out later on this morning, of course. 65 at noon, 70 high temperature today, so cool start, and then, boy, way up there. T-shirt, shorts, that's going to be the situation later on this afternoon. Pretty much the same thing each and every day. Up through Thursday, milder Friday morning, a little more humidity is going to try and build in here, but we have another front moving on through just in time for the uh, big river lighting down here, uh, just down the down the river from us. We'll tell you more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any problems out there? No, I was pretty much in a traffic trance over here, Mike, looking at the roadways. A lot of pavement out there. Let's get a look around town and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 281 at 410 if you're making your way maybe near the airport this early in the morning. Traffic shouldn't be too bad. And US 90, a couple, both the east and westbound lanes uh, don't appear to be too crowded with traffic. We are getting closer to 6 a.m. So of course, enjoy those quiet roadways while you can. But remember to keep your focus out there as well, because we do have some overnight construction that is still wrapping up. Now you see that stretch of red that is building along 410 westbound. That looks like to be some uh, overnight construction where we still have crews out there. So if you're traveling near Converse, anywhere near that area, please be on the lookout. Quick look at the travel time, though. Things are still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound with 26 minutes right here to the Alamo City. 33 along 87 northbound if you're traveling in from Lavernia this early. And for our friends down in Floresville, should be about a 24-minute commute for you. But we get one last look around town at 1604 at Petrenko, where we really don't see a lot out there. I'll have another update and more road closures are on the way. It's a new week, so I'll tell you where and what to expect a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, sir. Some gruesome accusations against a man who the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office says almost killed a woman. This is 31 year old Roger Gonzalez. He's accused of beating a woman, cutting her, wrapping her in plastic and then leaving her in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere. You can see the exact location where she was found on Eichmann Road near Poteet. This happened Friday. Gonzalez was found that same day. The woman is still in the hospital. Gonzalez is in the Atascosa County Jail with a bond set at $40,000. Well, now to a major move in the travel industry. Alaska Airlines has come to terms on a deal to purchase Hawaiian Airlines, according to officials from both companies. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the combined organization will be based in Seattle, but Alaska Airlines says it will establish a major hub in Honolulu. The two airlines who bear the names of the 49th and 50th states are joining forces. We are coming together and joining networks, um, and uh, this will be pro-consumer uh, and pro-competition. For a price tag of $1.9 billion, Alaska Air announced its plans to buy Hawaiian Airlines. 
both airlines bring a tremendous amount to uh, the table here, and it's, it's uh, going to be a, a great combination going forward. The agreement between the two former rivals calls for both carriers to hold on to their individual names. These brands uh, are so beloved in the areas uh, that they serve uh, and the massive amount of loyalty that they've accrued over the years that we're going to do something unique and, uh, and deploy both brands and the combined company. Officials say the combined airline will have more than 1,200 departures per day and will be able to compete with bigger airlines like American, Delta, Southwest, and United. I'm excited about the, what this combination does uh, for the business, and I'm excited about the opportunities uh, that our guests and our employees have with the business going forward. The deal, which is expected to plot along like a taxiing plane, could take between 9 and 18 months to hammer out, and it needs the approval from the boards of both carriers and U.S. regulators. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, today the U.S. Supreme Court will review the major bankruptcy settlement for Purdue Pharma, the maker of the opioid painkiller OxyContin. The ruling would award billions of dollars to victims and communities harmed by the nation's opioid epidemic, while also shielding the company's owners, the Sackler family, from future lawsuits. If ultimately approved, the Purdue settlement would pay out $6 billion over 18 years with money flowing to 138,000 individual families, state health programs, and Native American tribes. If the deal is blocked, legal experts say it could upend the nation's bankruptcy system and the process for resolving cases of mass injury and potentially force the reopening of other major cases. In Florida, a 20-year-old college football player who was injured in a drive-by shooting is alive today because his phone saved his life. Now, authorities in Martin County, north of West Palm Beach, say the victim was walking home when there was a drive-by shooting. He was shot three times. Now, one bullet traveled through his index finger, hitting the phone, which he was using at the time, and which police believe saved his life. Police still do not know if this was a random or a targeted shooting. Wow, what a miracle. I know. 537, 54 degrees. And coming up next, a look back at the sights and sounds of this year's rock and roll marathon and half marathon. Steph, somewhere in that crowd. <laughs> okay, outside with live cam this morning. Kind of typical around here lately. Cool, chilly mornings in some spots, and then a very nice warm up and lots of sunshine in the afternoon. We'll see if we have the best of both worlds heading into the rest of the work week. 541 thousands of runners like Stephanie are recovering after pounding the pavement for miles this weekend. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So a lot of them woke up bright and early yesterday for this year's rock and roll marathon and half marathon. And our Daniela Ibarra spoke with those who tested their limits and others cheering them on. It's a moment this crowd has waited months for. The rock and roll marathon starting right in front of City Hall. I don't know if I should cry or not. The race is Josue Gonzalez's first. I'm just going to try and finish, not trying to break any records. At every mile, runners are greeted by a crowd cheering them on. Andrea and her husband, Clint, are celebrating their friends from Houston. I've done it before and being in them sh those shoes and just watching all these athletes knew knowing what's gone into all this effort to make it here today. That's really exciting and exhilarating to see them living out their dreams. The most thrilling moment is crossing the finish line. Tired, but amazing. It feels just going through that finish line is just unexplainable. Two San Antonians took the top spot for the men and women's marathon. It was a lot of fun. I had a blast. It felt good uh, the whole day. I did not expect that felt. <laughs> so it felt pretty good. For some, the joy at the finish line is almost too much to bear. Jose de los Santos, who came to race from Mexico, couldn't believe he broke his personal record time. Dad, he's a champion, and I'm so proud of him, and one day I want to run like him. For others, just having a medal around their neck is enough of a victory. It feels like a big accomplishment, like the biggest goal in my life. I feel so happy, I feel tired, <laughs> but we made it. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Now, Steph, you ran the half? Yes. Nice. And what was your time? It was uh, two hours, 10 minutes, uh, which, which is good for me. And, Fantastic. And uh, the weather definitely helped. Well, yeah. I'm so glad you had a great race. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It was fun. Five forty-three, fifty-three 53 degrees.
So it's December, but does that mean it's too late to plant something in the garden? I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, what you can still plant this month. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 1604 at Marbuck Road. Looks good there. Also at this shot at Loop 1604, but we are going to get a check in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Welcome back. It's 546. So the case at Fall Garden is thriving. The late start on fall-like temperatures after a hotter than average summer has allowed for plants like tomatoes and peppers to continue to produce. But is it too late to plant winter veggies? This segment of Gardening with KSAT, Sarah Costa tells us what she suggests planting now before we get our first freeze. Last week I showed you how to take advantage of leftover grocery store-bought garlic and how to plant them. I had a positive response from that story from our viewers online. I even had Chris Riojas email me saying, I love your gardening segment. Aw, thanks Chris, but what can I plant now this season? Great question. Ideally, you would like to get your winter veggies planted earlier, but as our KSAT Weather Authority team says, Oh, hi! Following our hottest summer on record, fall temperatures were a little delayed. On average, we would have seen our first freeze in San Antonio by now, and we're not expecting freezing temperatures over the next seven days. So let's take advantage of the extra time we have of these warmer temps to get our winter vegetables in the ground. You can plant mature transplants of greens like spinach, lettuces, and kale. For herbs, transplants of rosemary and cilantro work. You can also plant in-ground produce, like transplant onions. You can even sow your carrot seeds anytime through the winter. These are all winter-hardy plants that enjoy cooler temps and can tolerate moderate freezes. Happy gardening! I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. She used all the emojis in that one. I <laughs> loved it. My, my favorite was the little bunny rabbit off Me to too. the side. Me too. All right, let's get hopping over to Steven and see how things are looking. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I would need to put some little car emojis, but I have all the vehicles out here on Transguide you can see moving behind me. 35 at 37, folks, as we get a look around town, things don't look too bad. We're getting closer to 6 a.m. minute by minute, uh, but just watch out because we do have a little bit of that overnight construction in certain areas of town and more on the way tonight. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but behind me, you're seeing some quiet roadways. The one spot where we've seen a little bit of a delay, a delay is over here on the northeast side, 410 westbound. We do know that there's going to be some overnight work taking place there, and this is actually pothole work. It's along I-35 northeast. So over on that side of town, we will see that work begin around 9 tonight and finish at 5 in the morning. But this takes us all the way to the end of the work week, December 8th. So be on the lookout because there will be a right lane closure on Starlight Terrace heading westbound. This will be right there along I-35 from the northbound frontage road to the southbound frontage road. And I know that's a lot of information that you're seeing there, but if you go ahead and head over to ksat.com slash traffic, there's a full article that breaks down what you need to know before you have to go. But back out here on Transguide, traffic is moving. There's nothing out of the ordinary here just yet, but we haven't approached morning rush at this hour, so things are looking good for the most part. All right. Thank you, yeah. Stephen. Saturday night sunset was stunning, oh, yeah. and yeah. last night was kind of a repeat. Yeah, and we had mostly clear skies in the afternoon, and then some of those oh, you clouds... You changed the picture on me. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Do what? I thought you looked like you changed the picture. Yeah, yeah did same thing, though. Okay. That was... Uh, the oh, yeah. other one was That's from pretty... last night as okay. well, so this is a... a picture from last night. Okay. And um, it yeah, it was right. just gorgeous out there with those few clouds that decided to uh, to slide on in here. And the sunset on Saturday was nice as well. Tonight is going to be the same situation. Tomorrow night, et cetera, et cetera. All right. This is what it looks like out there. 10 at 410. You can see all the twinkling lights off there in the distance. There is the uh, the downtown skyline. Lots of clear skies. Maybe a couple of uh, high clouds hanging around here. 47 Comfort, 50 Bandera, Bernie, 51 Bulverde, and 54 out there at the airport. We've actually gone up a little bit in the past couple of hours just because the wind has started to pick up, and that stirs up the atmosphere a bit more. We do have very dry air, so two of the three ingredients in place, dry air and clear skies, but like I said, we've got that wind. If we did not have wind, in theory, we could drop down into the low 40s. We're not going to, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, however the case may be. Uh, we've got the wind coming in here out of the north. Five, 10 miles per hour. This is in behind a front that moved through in the overnight hours. I do think we will drop down a couple of more degrees before it's all said and done into the uh, mid and upper 40s here in town. Big warm up already normal high temperature at noon. We top off at 70 later on today. Plenty of sunshine around here. Now, as far as the humidity, it's low this morning. It's going to 
stay pretty low the next few days, maybe trying to creep up dew points in the afternoon, then really start to work their way in here Friday, early Saturday. But the next front moves on through here, and that's going to drop temperatures, dew point temperatures down, and that's also going to cool us off. So what humidity tries to come back into the picture is going to be getting on out of here. Here's what's going on with the upper level winds. This is the the jet stream, if you will, the dividing line between the cold and the warm, and we had that little bit of a front move on through here. So we've got this nice northwesterly flow which pulls in that drier air that sticks around today. Tomorrow starts the humidity starts to come back in here. We get a little bit of a ridge to develop and that's going to allow temperatures to warm up a bit more going in toward the latter part of the week. But then as we head in toward Friday and Saturday, here comes this next front that's going to move through here. That's going to be about midday on Saturday. That's going to pull down some colder air then for Sunday and then going into the first part of next week. So forecast today, we are going to make it up to 70, 71 tomorrow, 70 on Wednesday. Chilly mornings, warmer afternoons, beautiful out there. A few more clouds on Thursday and then we go into Friday and that's going to be warmer, a bit more humid somewhat humid to start off Saturday and then that front moves on through here. As far as any rain, maybe a couple of little sprinkly showers off to the northeast. That's pretty much going to be about it. So bad news, no rain, good news events like the River of Lights right down there at the lock and dam. Uh, that's going to be going on Saturday from four till eight. A lot of activities. I get to uh, kind of be the master of ceremonies of that, so I'm looking forward to it because oh. Santa Claus is going to be there too, oh, kids. Awesome. So yeah. You're everywhere this time yes. of year. It's Christmas. Right. <laughs> Very busy. Fantastic. Okay. I'm hoping you're going to be out at the airport waving goodbye to folks headed out for travel this Christmas. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be directing yes. the planes. Yeah, something. Like that, <laughs> oh, so. that even too. better. Yes. So, see what Santa Claus thinks about the white beards. So. Nice. Aww. These are not so secret, Santa. <laughs> 553, 53 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3888, eight, eight, Fireball 5. Daily 4, 3159, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 22, 23, 29, 31, 32. Lotto, Texas, 12, 19, 23, 46, 47, 54. And Powerball, 28, 35, 41, 47, 60. Powerball 3, Power Play 2. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the latest on the story that we're all following, the major escalation in the Middle East with the U.S. warship responding to Iran-backed rebels in Yemen firing a barrage of missiles and drones at commercial ships. Also, the new study on drugs that are used for weight loss and alcohol use disorder that shows some promising early signs. Dr. Ashton is breaking it down for us, and we hope you'll stick with us right here on GMA. From now through the 12th, you can donate new shoes or socks to the Share the Shoes campaign. It's through Zapatos. Drop off those donations at any of the seven SAPD substations around town. They need shoes and socks or toddlers all the way through adult sizes. All this info is on ksat.com. And a reminder this morning to get out your phone and scan this QR code. The annual Salvation Army Parade of Kettles competition is in full swing. Local businesses and media compete to raise the most money to help families in need this holiday season. From now through midnight on the 24th, KSAT will be competing to raise the most money to help families in the Bear County area. We have all those details on KSAT.com. Well, ahead in the next hour of GMSA, the Texas Longhorns are two wins away from a national championship. What they'll need to do to walk away with the title. Plus, when the Spurs give fans something to celebrate, they'll be able to do it in a new place. We've got a first look at The Rock at La Cantera. And up next, drivers can expect delays on 1604 due to ongoing construction. Stephen Cavazzo is here to break it down in just moments. And speaking of the roads, a live look at 1604 and Medio Creek, where traffic is flowing smoothly. We're back after this. Let's look out there with live cam. Looking nice and cool out there. You're going to need a jacket this morning, 54 degrees. And we're going to be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of the day. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's 6 a.m. on your Monday, December 4th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather this weekend. It was fantastic. Cool mornings, warm afternoons, and plenty of sunshine to go around. Mike Osterage is here with our Monday forecast. Pretty much sums it up for Monday. Yeah, nice, uh, cool morning. Very warm in the afternoon. And once that sun goes down, it's going to cool off fairly quickly. Going to have beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset. And that's going to be the case the next uh, couple of days. 
Nice shot there. There's the uh, smokestacks over there at the quarry, all lit up in red and green for Christmas. Oh, it's a great picture right there. Temperature right now stands at 53, so we've dropped back down a degree. We'll drop down a couple of more degrees before it's all said and done. 40 right now in Kerrville, so they've cooled off as well. 45 in Comfort and some uh, 50s elsewhere. It's the wind that's preventing us from getting as cold as what we could get because it's keeping the atmosphere a lot more stirred up around here. We've got a wind out of the north, 5, close to 10 miles per hour, a little bit breezier there in Hondo. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. The update account's going to be coming out about 7:30 or so this morning and throughout the rest of today we're going to warm up quickly once that sun comes up we're going to make it up to 65 already at noon so already at what our normal average high temperature is then we continue up from there up to 70 for a high so it's again jackets this morning shorts and flip-flops later on today same thing the next couple of days going to talk about any rain chances very very small almost not even worth talking about. And then the next front that's going to be moving through just in time for the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything going on yet, Stephen? Uh, well, we do have a solid vehicle out there, Mike, uh, but we're not seeing any big slowdowns yet as we've entered 6 a.m. Let's get a look around town. There you saw 1604 at Marbach and 1604 at Spurs Ranch. A little bit more activity out there as we get closer to morning rush, but again, we're not seeing a reason to rush outside. Traffic looks pretty average at this hour, so just be on the lookout. As I mentioned, the only problem that we've detected is a stall vehicle right there at 410 eastbound as you approach I-10. It's not too far from Crossroads Boulevard. It's not causing any issues, but as always, that reminder, check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway and just be sure to move over or slow down if you see any flashing lights out there. Giving you a wide view of the map now here. Again, it's uh, pretty consistent. A lot of green on the screen except for that stretch of red where we see along 410 westbound. We'll take a closer look and see if our friends at Transcat can provide us with an image, but a quick look at your travel times. It's a pleasant drive from Pleasanton along I-37 northbound with 26 minutes to the Alamo City, 28 minutes along US-90 eastbound if you're heading in from Castroville, and the arrival from Lytle should be about 20 minutes along I-35 northbound. One last beautiful shot of 37 at the Alamo Dome where you saw the Tower of the Americas. Again, traffic picking up just a bit, but we have more road work on the way. I'll tell you where coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Sir, new this morning, San Antonio police say a man in a wheelchair was hit by a train overnight. Happened around 1 this morning near the intersection of West Commerce and Salado, just west of downtown. Police said the man was trying to cross the tracks when the train hit him. He was taken to a hospital. There's no word yet on his condition. Topping your morning headlines this weekend saw continued attacks involving U.S. Navy and Iranian-backed groups in the Middle East. As ABC's Liz Landers reports, U.S. Central Command says the attacks represent a direct threat to international security. Tensions remain high this morning in the Middle East as three commercial ships were attacked in the Red Sea. The Pentagon saying missiles coming from Yemen hit the ships during the seven-hour long attack. The USS Kearney, a Navy destroyer in the area, intercepted and shot down three drones while on patrol assisting the ships, according to the Pentagon, who blamed Iran for the attacks. It may have been that the missiles flew over the U.S. ships on their way to the intended target, which is one of the civilian ships. So there's a little bit of semantics here, but the important point here is that the Houthis are playing with fire by launching missiles over U.S. ships. The Pentagon adding in a statement that the United States will consider all appropriate responses in full coordination with its international allies and partners. And it's not the first time. Since the start of the war between Israel and Hamas, there have been a number of attacks from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen on ships in the Red Sea. The U.S. is being very careful not to turn the Red Sea into a shooting gallery. This latest attack comes as the fighting between Israel and Hamas escalates, with Israel saying they've expanded ground operations to every part of Gaza, pushing to the south as well. Israeli defense forces have conducted 10,000 airstrikes on the small territory since the start of the war. One this weekend reportedly killed a Hamas commander who helped carry out the October 7th attack on Israel. Bury me with him, says this little boy after his brother was killed. One of thousands of children killed in the conflict. About 80 percent of the population in Gaza is homeless, according to the United Nations. The humanitarian organization says that their shelters are overwhelmed and there's a lack of drinkable water, food and facilities. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. 
A surprise mega deal is taking off in the airline industry. Alaska Airlines looking to buy Hawaiian Airlines for nearly $2 billion. The companies would keep the same names as they are, but operate under one CEO. Analysts say the merger would likely be a win for Hawaiian's customers with more service to North America. The deal is expected to take at least one year to finalize. And happening today, the Supreme Court will review a $6 billion bankruptcy settlement between Purdue Pharma victims and communities ravaged by the opioid crisis. Now, Purdue Pharma is the maker of OxyContin, the deal that gives company owners, the Sackler family, immunity, protecting them from lawsuits. Now, attorney Michael Quinn is seeking a jury trial to keep the Sackler family on the hook. In a way, this case is about deterrence. It's about holding corporate leaders and owners uh, accountable for their business decisions. If approved, the bankruptcy settlement would pay $6 billion to individual families, state health programs, and Native American tribes over the next 18 years. But if the deal is blocked, legal experts say it could set a precedent for how corporate bankruptcy cases are settled. We're back here at home, over a dozen San Antonio businesses are leading a push for period product accessibility. As Avery Everett shows us, what started with one donation drop-off on the west side quickly spread across the city. It's uh, the strawberry orchetta. There's a reason behind this recipe. And it's pink colors. Filling each cup to the brim, bringing in support for period product accessibility. I feel I just relate with everything they do. This downtown coffee shop is now collecting donations and fundraising for a greater cause. We are the heart of the city and we need to uh, collaborate together to make the difference. It's another effort from the local group Period Palooza to fight against period poverty in San Antonio. Data in the U.S. shows around 16.9 million people who menstruate live in poverty. Two-thirds of them say they have struggled to afford these products in the past. We would love it to get as many products as possible. What started with just one locker on the west side has now swept into 20 other businesses all across town, taking in period product donations. We felt like we needed it. We didn't realize that other people also needed as much. These collections going back into the city through free pickup spots and nonprofit needs, finding ways to meet people where they are and to fill a demand the San Antonio Diaper Bank says is at an all-time high. We've seen an uptick on the number of items being requested. The diaper bank calling on the community to help bring in donations, especially with the holidays right around the corner. And for those families that are struggling and, and you hear it every day, you know, how it makes a difference. Pushing for more points of access is one of the reasons you'll see these boxes popping up across the city. Not everybody drinks coffee. Not everybody goes to bars. As Period Palooza says their work is far from over. This is just the beginning. Even if you finish your cup of coffee. This period pantry is still accepting donations and it's also available for pickups. We have the list of the other 20 businesses right now on ksat.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And the time now is 608 and 54 degrees for now. After the break, a college football player who was injured in a drive-by shooting is alive today because of this, his phone. More on what it looked like after the shooting next. And not a cold, cold December morning, but I still need a jacket and Still in the spirit of Christmas, we're 54 degrees right now. We'll be right back.